Welcome back folks. Uh, in this uh, video lecture, we will continue with the projectile motion and uh, I'm going to take an example here. Let's say if there is a cliff down here and then the height of this cliff is uh, 1.25 meter, 0.25 meter and you're standing here or yeah, you can say you're standing here. You roll a coin from uh, from this cliff with the with the velocity of let's say uh, 15 uh, 15 uh, centimeter per second, and then uh, that uh, that coin moves in the forward direction and then drops, and it follows this kind of a trajectory. I wanted to find out how far from the cliff it. Uh, comes down means when once it comes down how far it is from the uh, cliff so that's what we wanted to find out so basically we are looking for range in this scenario and how are we gonna uh, find it so first of all to find the range i'll use the formula vix times time which is equal to delta dx and if you if you don't know from where I got this formula, you can watch my previous lecture where I've mentioned about it, that how did we got to this number. So delta dx is equal to vix, horizontal velocity is 15 centimeters per second, 15 centimeters per second. First thing I have to do is I have to convert the centimeters per second into meters per second. So one meter equal to 100 centimeter. So I can write it as 0 0.15 meters per second. So this will become 0.15 meters per second multiplied by time. Now I'm lost because I, I'm not being given the time. I cannot solve these questions. How can I approach, how can I solve for time? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look into the vertical direction, what's given to me and try and find out the time from there. Because why I'm gonna try and find out the time from the vertical direction, time is a scalar quantity. So you need to remember the time taken by the projectile to land on the ground vertical direction will be the time taken by the projectile to when it is covering certain amount of a motion uh, in a uh, 2D way. So what do I mean by that? Let's say, let's say if the time, to, if I drop this uh, coin from the height and it takes three seconds to land on the ground and same coin if i uh, throw it with the horizontal velocity keeping the fact in the mind this is a horizontal velocity with 15 centimeters per second or one meters per second whatever velocity i throw it with they both will land on the ground in three seconds and uh, uh, that because there is uh, uh, the gravity is only acting in the vertical direction and horizontal acceleration we as we have already told uh, we've talked in the previous lecture that acceleration in the horizontal direction is considered as negligible air friction almost zero that's what we consider now i just wanted to tell you a majority of the time when students think about this question the frisbee come to their mind we don't think about the frisbee because frisbee eh, will encounter the air friction anything which will encounter the air friction then in that case the situation will be different we are talking about those things on which there is no air friction all right so hopefully you won't create a wrong assumption in your mind so now coming back to the question i wanted to find out the time taken by the projectile to land on the ground first of all because that will be the same time for the projectile to cover the horizontal displacement so I'll see what is given to me in the vertical direction. So D, dy, delta dy is equal to 1.25 meters. That's given to me. And this will be negative because the projectile is moving in the downward direction. And what else? G value, even if it is not given, if you are on Earth, it will always be negative 9.81 meters per second square. And then can I take a final velocity equal to zero? No, I cannot. This is where students make a mistake. We do not consider the final velocity as the velocity with which it, uh, 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 after it lands on the ground, we consider the velocity with which it strikes the ground. So obviously it's gonna strike the ground with certain velocity. So I cannot consider the final velocity as zero, but initial velocity, I can take that as zero. Initial V I X V I Y in vertical direction that I can consider zero because the object is thrown with certain horizontal velocity. There is no initial uh, vertical velocity. So I will remove this part and these are the three things given to me. Now I'm looking for the 
fourth thing, which will be equal to, which formula I'm gonna use. I'm, I'm trying to look for time and uh, I can use the formula which does not contain the final velocity. So that formula will be equal to VI, uh, VI Y times time plus half uh, AT square, or I can say GT square in this case equal to Delta D. Now, if I try and solve this question, Delta D, this is equal to Delta D Y, negative 1.25, equal to initial velocity, this is zero, times time, plus half times G value is negative 9.81 T square. So T value I can calculate easily from here, negative 1.25 equal to negative 4.905 T square. Negative and negative cancels out, and I can divide 4.905 on both sides, 4.905 cancels out on this side, so if I do the calculations on my calculator, so you can also try doing this calculation on your calculator. 1.25 divided by 4, 4.905, that comes across as 0 0.254. And then, which is equal to T squared, this will go on the other side, square root of 0 0.254 equal to T. Now, if I change this 0.254 this is equal to 0.504 approximately equal to t so 0.5 seconds approximately it's going to take uh, for the projectile to land onto the ground and then once we calculated that time i can use the same time to find out the range. So this is the time 0 0.5 second. I'll feed that value down here. Delta dx will be equal to 0 0.15 times uh, 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, or I can use the complete number as we mentioned 0 0.504. So 0 0.15 times 0 0.504, which comes across as 0 0.0 seven five six this is the displacement it's gonna cover in the in the horizontal direction obviously because this number is very small if you want to convert it into meter you can uh, centimeters you can write it as 7.56 centimeter two okay so that's how you're gonna approach uh, these kind of questions now this is a very interesting thing which i want to talk about this kind of a question let's say if we are given that the projectile is thrown with certain velocity in the not only in the vertical uh, horizontal direction but also in the vertical direction so again i'll draw it here this is a cliff and uh, you're standing on the cliff you throw something like this and so this one has let's say 20 meters per second velocity which is again uh, in vertical also in the horizontal direction and then uh, the projectiles and that that angle down here will be 30 degrees so i can first of all find the component of this velocity and again uh, what we are trying to find out when it's going to land on the ground and also the displacement covered by the projectile in the horizontal direction. That's what we are trying to do in this case. So if the projectile is thrown with 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees, the vertical component will be equal to 20 sine of 30, which is equal to 10. And this, this value will be negative because this is in the downward direction. And the other component value will be equal to 20 cos of 30, which is equal to 17.3 meters per second. This will stay as positive because this is horizontal. And again, one more time, if you forgot, this value will not change throughout its journey. Uh, so now I wanted to find uh, the range. So again, VI uh, X times time and which is equal to delta dx. I cannot solve this question because time is missing in this case. So I'm going to solve it in the vertical direction, delta dy equal to vi, vi y times time plus half uh, gt square in this case. Now you will find this distance. Again, I'll keep the same as 1.25 uh, 
well obviously I, i'll take a take a little more uh, vertical height because uh, we've taken a very fast velocity so i'll take this one as 200 meter so this one will be equal to 200 meter and initial velocity is 10 negative times time plus half g value is negative 9.81 t square now if you see this equation this equation will become a quadratic equation in earlier case this was zero so the question become relatively easy for me but now the question becomes very tough the whole idea of solving this question is to show you that uh, you're going to get stuck somewhere down here so how are you going to approach this question? A, you can convert it into the quadratic equation. Go ahead and try and apply the quadratic equation. That will give you the answer. So something you can, uh, you might have learned x squared plus uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, that kind of an equation. So you can convert this whole equation in that form. So it will look like something 200 minus 10t uh, minus 4.905 t square you're going to move the them on the other side so 4.905 t square plus 10 t uh, plus 200 equal to zero so this is the equation oh this is equal to zero so this is the equation you can use you can use the formula after this minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac upon 2a and find out the x value this is one of the approach where a value is 4.905 b value is 10 and c value is 200 in this equation okay if you want to do this you can go ahead and apply you will get the right result by using this one but there is another uh, technique if you if you let's say don't know how to solve using this technique you can first of all find the final velocity and then you can solve it also what do i mean by that so in this question, if I again go back and look into the question, V initial is equal to negative 10 meters per second given to me in the Y direction. G value is negative 9.81 meters per second square. And uh, what else is given to me? The, the displacement delta D, which is 200 with a negative sign. Again, I should have taken the negative down here also. So this number, is negative 200 because it's in the vertical direction downwards and uh, i can first of all find the v final velocity how i'm going to find the final velocity v final square equal to v initial square plus 2a delta d i can approach this again this is in y direction a will replace with g this is y this is y v final uh, uh, which we're looking for initial is uh, which is negative 10 so negative 10 square plus 2 times 9.81 times delta d delta d is negative 200 and this is 100 and this is negative 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 will become positive 19.6 19.6 multiplied by 200 which is 3 plus 3920 and you will add these two numbers v final value will be square root of this number nine two three nine two zero plus 100 and then that gives me four zero two zero and i'll take the square root of that number that's gonna give me four first of all four zero two zero and this number is gonna give me sixty three point four zero three that's the final velocity and it's i'll take the sinus plus minus because whenever you take the square root you will take the sinus plus minus which velocity i'm going to take v final as 63.403 or v final as negative 63.403 you guessed it right i'm going to take this number because the projectile is moving down so for final velocity is also in the downward direction so i'm going to take the this number and now i have the final velocity v final minus uh, uh, v initial divided by time and which is equal to acceleration which is negative 9.81 in this case final velocity is 63 negative 63.403 initial velocity was negative 10 negative and negative 10 that's how you're going to put it and then t value is what we're looking for negative 9.81 equal to this you're going to move the t on the other side 
which is negative 9.81 t equal to negative 63.403 plus 10 and then you're going to solve for this this thing which is 53.403 a negative negative 9.81 t you can divide both sides by negative 9.81 now cancels out negative 9.81 now if i look into the math 53.403 403 divided by 9.81, which is going to give you T value as 5.44 seconds. Now I have the value of 5.44 seconds, and I can put that value back into the equation to find the range. So uh, I was trying to find the range somewhere somewhere down here Th this is where i was trying to find the range horizontal velocity was 17.3 and multiply by 5.44 which is delta d x so that will give you the range so that's how you can approach these questions so hopefully you got the gist of how you can approach the uh, projectile motion questions i'll see you with another video till then goodbye Think of subscribing the channel. If you don't want to do that, that's also fine. See you. Good day.